Well, if you like a good laugh, get ready for a cracker, because this will sure have you giggling. Before we go any further, make sure you click subscribe and then click the little bell so you get the notifications. Ha! <laughs> All right then, here we go. Man gets his long-time Christmas wish, and it turns into the most hilarious family dinner ever. Many people would say that Christmas is all about family, and in most families we do get together for the day and enjoy a nice dinner. During that time we get to catch up on the latest and enjoy a laugh or two in the process. There's also something else that often happens, and that's when one of our family members is out there and says or does something inappropriate. Yeah, we all have one in our family. Something happened at this family get-together that really raised some eyebrows. What does a Christmas dinner and an inflatable doll have in common? Find out. As a joke, my brother used to hang a pair of pantyhose over his fireplace before Christmas. He said all he wanted was for Santa to fill them. What they say about Santa checking the list twice must be true because every Christmas morning, although Jay's kid's stockings were overflowing, his poor pantyhose hung sadly empty. One year, I decided to make his dream come true. I put on sunglasses and went in search of an inflatable love doll. They don't sell those things at Walmart. I had to go to an adult bookstore downtown. If you've never been in an X-rated store, don't go. You'll only confuse yourself. I was there an hour saying things like, what does this do? You're kidding me. Who would buy that? Finally, I made it to the inflatable doll section. I wanted to buy a standard, uncomplicated doll that could also substitute as a passenger in my truck so I could use the carpool lane <laughs> during rush hour. Finding what I wanted was difficult. Love dolls come in many different models. The top of the line, according to the side of the box, could do things I'd only seen in a book on animal husbandry. I'd settled for lovable Louise. She was at the bottom of the price scale. To call Louise a doll took a huge leap of the imagination. On Christmas Eve, with the help of an old bicycle pump, Louise came to life. My sister-in-law was in on the plan and let me in during the wee morning hours long after Santa had come and gone. I filled the dangling pantyhose with Louise's pliant legs and bottom. I also ate some cookies and drank what remained of a glass of milk on a nearby tray. I went home and giggled for a couple of hours. The next morning, my brother called to say that Santa had been to his house and left a present that had made him very happy, but had left the dog confused. She would bark, start to walk away, and then come back and bark some more. We all agreed that Louise should remain in her pantyhose so the rest of the family could admire her when they came over for the traditional Christmas dinner. My grandmother noticed Louise the moment she walked in the door. What the hell is that? she asked. My brother quickly explained, it's a doll. Who would play with something like that? Granny snapped. I had several candidates in mind but kept my mouth shut. Where are her clothes? Granny continued. Boy, that turkey sure smells nice, Gran, Jay said, trying to steer her into the dining room. But Granny was relentless. Why doesn't she have any teeth? Again, I could have answered, but why would I? It was Christmas and no one wanted to ride in the back of the ambulance saying, Hang on, Granny, hang on. My grandfather, a delightful old man with poor eyesight, sidled up to me and said, Hey! Who's the naked gal by the fireplace? I told him she was Jay's friend. A few minutes later, I noticed Grandpa by the mantle talking to Louise. Not just talking, but actually flirting. It was then that we realised this might be Grandpa's last Christmas at home. The dinner went well. We made the usual small talk about who died, who was dying and who should be killed. When suddenly... Louise made a noise that sounded a lot like my father in the bathroom in the morning. Then she lurched from the pantyhose, flew around the room twice and fell in a heap in front of the sofa. The cat screamed. I passed cranberry sauce through my nose and Grandpa ran across the room, fell to his knees and began administering mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. My brother fell back over his chair and wet his pants and Granny threw down her napkin, stomped out of the room and sat in the car. It was indeed a Christmas to treasure and remember.
Later, in my brother's garage, we conducted a thorough examination and found the cause of Louise's collapse. We discovered that Louise had suffered from a hot ember to the back of her right thigh. Fortunately, thanks to a wonder drug called duct tape, we restored her to perfect health. Louise went on to star in several bachelor party movies. I think Grandpa still calls her whenever he can get out of the house. <laughs> that one, sure enough, gave me a chuckle. I don't know about you. Well, we got stacks more videos like that, so if you like some more jokes, click just here. If you enjoy puzzles and a bit of a brain teaser, then click here. If you like nice heartwarming stories, click here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Love to hear your comments in the messages below. All right, see you next time.